whether you're a software developer who considers moving to management or you're already a seasoned engineering manager with a couple years of experience, you might be wondering what is next? What are the career options? What is the career path for engineering managers? After you lead the team for a couple of years, what happens then? In this video, I will share with you a number of options that engineering managers have, and let's talk about them. My name is Gregory, you're watching Not Only Code. Let's start. When you start your career in software development, the first couple of years are usually quite straightforward. You start as a junior developer, then you move to mid-level, then you become a senior developer. At the senior level, you can decide to stay there. You can choose just to continue your career as a senior developer. Alternatively, you can try to go forward and you can become either engineering manager choosing the management path or principal developer choosing the individual contributor path. When you're already an engineering manager, this career path is not so obvious anymore. There are a lot of options that you can choose from, but today I'll share with you five that I've seen engineering managers that I know taking. The first choice is to continue climbing the career ladder. That involves getting promoted to the next level that, depending on your company, might have a very different name. Might be senior engineering manager, head of engineering, might be director of engineering, whatever it is, this career path involves moving from managing individual contributors to taking care of managers. So now your direct reports will not be programmers, will be engineering managers, and you will be responsible for a larger number of teams. This might involve a whole department in the company, it might involve sub-department, it all depends on the company size. When should you choose this option? Well, Definitely you need to feel good in your role as an engineering manager. You need to be comfortable staying away from the code. You need to feel comfortable managing people. You need to be willing to focus more on high level, more strategic goals. If you want to take more responsibilities, if you're fine with doing more strategy, if you're fine with taking a bigger role, with larger scope of responsibilities, with a larger area of influence, then moving up is definitely something for you. On the other hand, if you enjoy staying close to the groundwork, if you enjoy working with programmers, if you enjoy specializing in this narrow thing, then probably this is not a career path that you should be following. Option number two is to become a CTO of a smaller company. Let's face it, if you work at the large corporation, then you will probably not become a CTO of this company. If you have a thousand developers in your company, then maybe you have 100 engineering managers. Maybe you have 10 or 20 directors. Maybe you have two or three VPs of engineering, but there's just one CTO. One CTO after, out of more than a thousand people. Most of the CTOs are CTOs of small companies. And this is an alternative career path. As a CTO, you will be responsible for everything related to the tech in the company. You will be responsible for all the managers and eventually accountable for all the developers in the company. But also you will be very strongly involved in working with different vendors, in working with the top leadership of the company like CEO, CPO, etc. You will potentially get involved in the clients, especially if your company sells a tech product, especially if this company works with big clients, CTO might need to join the meetings. You might eventually become a board member of the company. This option naturally looks similar to the previous one, but the scope of work of CTO is much, much broader. As a director of engineering, you are still staying within your area of expertise. As a CTO, you manage everything related to tech, even things that you have absolutely no idea about. I've never worked as a CTO myself, but for a couple of years, I worked very, very closely with a CTO of the company where I worked at. And for a number of years, I observed what he was doing, what he was responsible for. And let me tell you that it was a big challenge for him. Coming from software developer background, he had a lot of the technical skills, but the number of things that he had to learn in a very short period of time was just astounding. If you look for something very challenging, if you look for something that will allow you to take a broad, very broad scope of work, then this option, then becoming a CTO might be a perfect fit for you. When shouldn't you do it? 
Well, as a CTO, you will be responsible for tons of things. And a lot of these things will be outside of your expertise. You will have to delegate a lot. You will have to trust a lot of people. You will not be able to manage everything. On the other hand, you will have to do a lot of stuff that you do not enjoy. Maybe you do not like talking to customers. Well, good luck, you have to do it. So there are a lot of challenges and difficulties related to being CTO. It's also a very stressful role. Still, if you're up for a challenge, I think that being even for a short period of time a CTO has a lot of value because it teaches you a lot, a lot of different things about running a company, especially understanding the business perspective. Option number three is to become a consultant. Freelancing is not reserved for engineering managers. This is something that you can do already as a software developer, but now having the management experience, having the expertise in leading people, you can become a consultant who doesn't necessarily specialize in one technology, but can help companies with larger scope of things. When I was a developer, I did some freelancing and I specialized in Ruby and JavaScript. Now, if I become a freelancer, I can help companies with hiring. I can help with building company culture. I can help with introducing remote work, with building offshore teams, with a number of different things that I had taken before as an engineering manager and that I can now help the companies around me to succeed in. When should you do that? Well, if you value flexibility, if you're tired of the corporate culture and you want to become independent, and if you enjoy shortened assignments, if you want to work with different customers, if you want to work on different projects, different challenges, then going independent, becoming consultant might be a great option for you. You will have a chance to learn a lot about different working cultures. You will have a chance to work with different groups and your projects will usually last a couple months to maybe a year. If you are okay with that, then that might be a good choice for you. When you shouldn't do that? Well, being a consultant means that you have to sell your expertise. You have to find customers. Sometimes it will take just 5% of your time. Sometimes it will take 20% of your time. You have to feel comfortable talking to people in lots of different environments. Maybe you've been a manager at a startup, but now some of your clients will be corporate. Maybe they will be traditional companies from, you know, non-tech industries. Working with these different types of customers might be frustrating. And if you do not enjoy that, then you shouldn't do it. As a consultant, you're losing this comfort of having a stable job, the benefits that come with working at a larger company. And of course you get a lot of freedom, you get a lot of flexibility, but it is more risky, it is less stable position. So that's what you should consider. Option number four is to stay in the engineering manager role, but move horizontally. Every two years or so, you can jump to another department. You can lead a different team. You can learn a lot about the new domains. A couple of years ago, I used to manage teams of backend and frontend developers that were working or rather typical web applications. Later, I moved to cybersecurity and currently I work in infrastructure. These are different areas, different domains that I was involved in as an engineering manager. It was the same role. It was like a horizontal move, although between different companies, but I still stay in the, in the same position. And if you enjoy your role as an engineering manager, if you enjoy leading programmers, if you enjoy staying close to the actual groundwork being done, and if you don't want to necessarily take larger responsibilities, if you don't want to move up and work more with stakeholders, less with programmers, then this is a great option for you. I think that it is actually very interesting to stay at the same level of responsibilities, to just decide, okay, this is my career level, I'm fine with that, but I still want to learn different things. And you can move between DevOps and machine learning and front end and yet other things. As an engineering manager, you have this combination of the general skills, the management skills that can be applied basically in any domain and technical skills. And this combination should allow you to move between different specializations quite easily. 
Even if you will never become an expert machine learning engineer, you can become an engineering manager in machine learning because your people skills will allow you to join and become an effective manager and over time you can learn and become quite familiar with the domain. When it comes to downsides, I would say that boredom might be something that will creep in after some time. Even though you will be moving between different areas, the people management challenges stay quite similar. So you will have underperforming employees, you will have challenges with different stakeholders. Over time you will figure out how to do it. And in any new team, it will look quite familiar. Also, you might feel that you are not making progress in your career. You move from one area to another, but you never move up. You never take more responsibilities. You're just taking the same responsibilities in a different group. So after a while, you might realize, okay, I am a bit bored. But then you can choose a different option. So still, staying as a manager has a lot of value. And if you enjoy your work, you do not have to ever move up or move out of the company taking a completely different role. Engineering manager is similar to senior developer in that sense. Nobody expects you to go up. Nobody expects that at some point you will become a director. You can just stay engineering manager and that's perfectly fine. And the last fifth option is to move to a related role. I've seen engineering managers moving, for example, to product. After some time they realized, hey, actually working closely with the business is something that interests me more. I've seen people moving to a solution architect role. I've also seen people moving from engineering manager back to individual contributor role. All of these things are possible. And if you feel a bit tired of managing people and if you want to just change something, to explore something new, but not necessarily as a team leader, then going to one of these options or going to a yet different role, maybe working on something closer with the customers, maybe working on something closer to the business, is possible. It might feel to you that this is going backwards, that from the IC role you move to management and now what? Now you take a step back? Not necessarily. Going to IC role is not a regression. You are still moving on. You're moving to another role where you have other different responsibilities. And even, even if you decide to go back to the exact same role that you had previously, it was still worth a shot to become a manager and the skills that you gain will certainly be very helpful to you. As you see, as an engineering manager, you are not confined to one career path. There is no right or wrong here. A lot of people choose different options, but there is right or wrong for you. Do not choose something that just seems natural. Do not choose something that just because there is an opportunity to do it. Choose something when you know that you can do it and when you know that you want to do it. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. In the meantime, take care.